Hello, welcome to the section of Mastering Statistics. In this section we're going to talk about interpreting the standard deviation. Specifically, we're going to talk about what we call the empirical rule of statistics. Um, I really can't stress to you how important this section of the class is because it really, in this section, we start to tie together a bunch of things. You know, we've, we've summarized and covered lots of material with data sets and standard deviation and variance and frequency distributions and all of these things, but ultimately we've been kind of hinting all along that we're trying to collect this data so that we can draw conclusions about larger populations. That's what we're always trying to do. And so in this case, what we're going to do is learn how we can start to draw some basic conclusions from data using the standard deviation. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is I've, I've hinted before um, that the standard deviation was important because it tells you roughly a good chunk of your data should lie between one standard deviation. In other words, I think I've said to you before, if you have a classroom of students and the average or the mean is about an 80 and the standard deviation is 10 points, then that means that plus or minus one standard deviation around the mean, so plus 10 points minus 10 points around the mean of 80 points, most of our students should have scored in that range. So if your mean is 80, then somewhere from 90 to 70, most of our data should have fallen in that range. Most of our kids or most of our students should have grades that fall into there. But notice when you say the words like most of the data, it isn't very scientific. I was very careful to tell you that the standard deviation is telling you where a good chunk most of your data lies, but I didn't quantify it at all. I didn't give you any concrete you know, facts with regard to that. Here we're going to cover those facts. I'm going to tell you exactly what percentage of people should fall between one standard deviation of the mean and then also two standard deviations and so on so that you can kind of finally understand why this concept is useful to begin with. The first thing is I want to make sure you understand that everything I'm going to tell you in this section, it only applies to bell-shaped data, which is extremely common extremely common and that's kind of an interesting thing by itself if you go collect data on average almost always it's going to be bell shaped and what i mean by that let me give you an example of what bell shaped data is right so if i have taking the example of grades in the classroom because it's something we're all familiar with if i have grades and if i have the number of students here so this would be stu like this then let's say I take an exam, you know, and I figure out that the average value, the average grade of everybody that scored on this test was an 85, okay? So what bell shape means is that if you go and do this with a large enough class of any number of students, then what you're going to find is the data is almost always going to look like this. It's going to go up, and then it's going to kind of peak, and then it's going to kind of come back down. This should be symmetrical. I'm not a perfect artist, so you got to kind of bear that in mind, but it should be absolutely symmetrical about the mean. And what this means is that most of the data, you can see this is number of students up here. So the taller this curve is, it means the more people scored that, that uh, score. Now, I'm not going to write it all down because I don't want to clutter this up, but over here, here's 85. So here you have 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, all the way up to 100. And here you have, you know, 84, 83, 82, all the way down to the lowest grades that you have on your test, right? So that means that because of the peak of the curve is right on top of 85, that means 